I know. I know. I told you I wasn't going to do it. Wasn't going to do it. Here we are. Going to do it. Since I did the fix on the fence, it's been working okay. But I decided it went on sale and I picked up a new fence. I know, I know, I told you I wasn't going to do it because it was costing, it was going to cost too much. Uh, most of these fences are in the four, five, even six. If you get the anchor, it's like almost a thousand for one of those. And I told you this saw wasn't worth it. But recently, I'm like, this saw is now almost 900 Canadian at Home Depot. I bought it for five and change. Um, but the good thing is, is when I do get rid of the saw, and at some point, I will upgrade the saw to something more powerful, um, whatever. Right now, I want to make it comfortable, and this fence is heavy duty. 30 inch, uh, 30 inch um, rip capacity. So roughly the same thing. The rails are a little bit longer. I think they're six inches longer than my standard table saw, which that's fine, six inches, not killer. Um, I still like the fix on the original fence. I'm gonna keep the original fence and rails. So if I do sell it, these are gonna come off and then I'll put the originals back on. So whatever. This is going to be install of, and this is a um, CraftX. So this is their, um, fence for their table saw so it's a CX 230 it's for that table saw and it's easily supposedly easily mountable to any table saw on the market with 30 inch rip and a 27 inch deck that's what I have so I'm gonna take you through the steps of taking the old off putting the new on what I had to do what I had to modify all that stuff and First step is going to be taking everything apart. That is pretty self-explanatory and I'm not going to get into that. You just take bolt time. So I'm going to go and do all that and I'll come back and we'll start installing a new one. So, so just to give you an idea of quality, so this is the new one. This is considerably longer, probably about six inches and it's one piece of extruded aluminum and it's got some beef to it. This is the original off the saw. The saw came in a box that was yay big. So this fence or this rail was in two pieces. So you had to put these, these little clips. See the clip there and there's one on the bottom to keep it together. And weight wise is probably half the amount what this one is. Uh, this one's the same thing, so the only difference on the back rail, well this one's a smaller rail, so this is the new one, this is a smaller rail, and all the fence does on that rail is just ride it. There's nothing, where this one has a little lip on the back of it, and that's how the fence gets tightened down, was with that lip, and there's a little hook on the back of the actual fence. Uh, the fences themselves, This is the original. This is the new one. So as you can see, it's a different design. So this has got a little uh, indent, and it's got, <clears throat> see underneath it's got pads, spring-loaded pads sort of deal. Uh, same with the front on the cam. There's a pad, and it holds it down. So this rides in that where this rides in this little gully and on the back of this. And that's how that happens. So this one's, there's not really much to see on this one. It's just got the cam there and these are new. I will link that there if you want to see this video. If you don't want to replace it with this. That's the differences. This one is more than double the weight of that fence. And the reason why I got this one also is because 
You can still put T-Tracks. So you can put T-Tracks here, you can put T-Track here on the other side, and it's a beefy, beefy fence. And for what I'm seeing, this is going to be just plug and play. Um, the only thing I was worried about was the holes on the back of this one lining up. And I did a quick little thing, and they line up perfectly. So I don't think I'm going to have an issue with that. And then this is just, well, I'll show you. All right, so the easy way to install this, and it's extremely easy. So it's, this is the T-Track, and all you do is you put a hex bolt in, and you line it up to wherever your other holes are. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's got a T-Track under here, and that would be for power. So I got my switch down there, put a couple T's in there, or a couple hex bolts. So this one's pretty easy. And then same with this one. This one, all the holes pretty much line up to what the holes on the saw already do. So all you gotta do is just put everything back the way you had it. And if they supply all the, the hardware, so those are all the bolts and nuts and everything else. So I'm gonna do a time lapse on installing the back. It should be pretty, pretty simple. And we'll go from there. Okay, back where I was on, I had, so through this uh, wing, which I will link right here, this is a new wing that I put in, um, I had to kind of fiddle with it a little bit. Not a big deal, but everything went in perfectly. This is the hardest part, is to get all these T, uh, these hex bolts to line up with the holes. You put it in, put some nuts on the back, and tighten them down. So, I'm going to do that right now. Aha! So another thing you're going to have to do once you get this on is to zero out your um, marks. Now you can still, okay, you still have a little bit of play if you need to. You can just move these, move your little cursor. Um, my rail, this rail is still loose, this rail is still loose, so I rose my blade, no power is on, I butt it to the blade, and I zeroed it this way. Now if I feel that it's a little bit wonky after that, I'll adjust this. But this is where it's roughly going to be sitting. So now I'm going to tighten them all down, and then I'm going to make sure that this is good to my miter slot make sure she's not doing some wacky wacky stuff because there's adjustments under this and then i'll make sure it travels or runs good and then i am going to use one thing from the old fence and that's this thing so this thing was on the old fence and all it is is it sits right here and right there and connects connects these two that's it that'll go on I can put end caps on, um, I have to put my power switch, my power switch will end up like right here, which is good because the other one was like right here, and I noticed that when I'm cutting, because I cut majority of the stuff right side of the blade, uh, that I sometimes bump the power <laughs> when I'm cutting. So this is a little bit further away, no problems. So I'm going to tighten that up and see how the miter... Oh, all these bolts, so two tools you're going to need, well three tools actually. You need a half inch crescent or open end. You're going to need a two and a half millimeter. Oh, sorry, that isn't wrong. Six millimeter Allen key and a Phillips. That's all you need to do in this install. Okay, that's done. So I'm going to put in the end, so the little thing that came from the other one, and then we can check uh, 
to see if the miter is aligned and all that fun stuff. So, all right. Okay. So on this fence, there are a few adjustments. So this is a little different than the rigid fence because this is running on a ball bearing. Um, see the nut? Loosen the nut, and you can adjust this up and down. <coughs> Excuse me. So if this is running too low, that hits your table. All you got to do is raise this up a little bit, tighten it back down. Good to go. Uh, this side is the same thing. You have this runs on these little nubbins. Now I think that at some point those will wear out because that's just looks like nylon. So it runs on top of these and then this right here has it run onto this. So all three of those are adjustments. So you can raise these up to adjust it so it doesn't hit your table. You can pull this back or pull it forward if it wears out a little bit to make sure it doesn't have a lot of slot this way. Uh, another adjustment you can do is if, say this thing, so I've already checked this thing. This thing right out of the box lined up with my, uh, uh, my saw blade and I zeroed it out pretty, pretty, pretty dang close. And then what I did is I clamped it down on the miter slot and it ran true all the way. And then the other thing I did, and this is one of the reasons why I changed, well, one of them I changed is that I didn't have to worry about measurements. So on the rigid one, it would have a tendency to do this or this, depending on how you set it up. This one, no matter where I put it, it's the same measurement from the fence to the blade, front and back. So that's a big bonus. But if for instance, you needed to adjust it, for whatever reason, you have this screw and that screw. And that adjusts these little wing plate things. So it gives you either more tension or less tension. And it helps in keeping the fence when it's tied down to be true. Uh, what was the other thing? So the only thing that I am seeing that kind of is a pain in a bum and it's not a huge thing because my other fence didn't run very good either is it runs a little I'm sure it might be just a break-in thing but it runs a little okay it's not like like well mind you if you get a saw stop everything runs on bearings it's like you can just go like this and it just go off the saw this one you gotta pull a little bit and the other thing that I'm noticing is when you there's this little flap right here. And I see this little flap. There's a little flap right here. And that helps keep the tension on the uh, fence. You gotta make sure when you put this down that it doesn't stay underneath and it'll make your fence go wibbly wobbly. So the one thing I need to do on this fence is to, when I move it, is to hit it on the base. So. When I move it, I move it like right here. If I move it right here, I might bind it and it might not run right. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing, and this is minor, is when I go to lock the fence down, it'll jump a little bit. So as soon as you get it down, because there's nothing holding that end, everything is on this end. So it's just gonna go whoop, whoop, until you lock it down and then it's solid. It's like, super solid I'm happy with it so I can still put t-tracks um, I'm eventually gonna make a thing that goes over top of it for sacrificial cuts for really really small cuts stuff like that uh, right now I'm going to raise this end of it just a little bit just so it's even all the way across it's just OCD stuff um, this is the manual it came with so Anybody wants to take a screenshot of it, there it is. It was literally plug and play. Everything lined up perfectly. Uh, there was no modifications to do on this. This was a beautiful install. I didn't think it, I thought, I thought the back rails, I might have to open them up just a little bit. Nothing. Ran perfect. Uh, and no, this is not sponsored by anybody because it seems like I'm getting more graphic stuff here. 
I have my planer, I have my sander, and now I have a fence. Nobody's sponsoring me, just this guy sponsoring me. So this video is brought to you by moi. Just a funny little joke. Um, that's it. This is done, it is good. All I gotta do is one little adjustment and I can put this all back at a spot and it's a done deal. Success. Like it. And I'm liking this. This feels a lot better than the other one. I'm happy with it, even though it cost me 300 bucks and it's on sale right now. So I'll try to leave us a, uh, uh, a link in a uh, description. Um, like this video, subscribe, leave me a comment. Anybody else have this saw with this fence? Just curious, just doing a little survey. That's it, everything's good. Next step is going to be making a router lift to go into the hole that is over here. This, this, this hole right here, that's where router lift's going. So that's gonna be probably my next a little bit on the table saw. Everything else is good, other than I'd like to at some point switch it to 220. But, that's what it is. So if you like it, leave me a comment. And that is all I got for you from this. This is an easy install. Anybody could do it. I showed you all the little tips, trips, tips and tricks to this. There's not many. Hope everyone's good, and I'll see you next time.